What's going on, Internet? It is your boy, Eric Van Holtz, back again with another awesome episode from Beard Brand. Hope all is going well on the other side of the Internet. Wanted to follow up with uh, video number two. I thought I could do them all in one video, but looks like I need to do two or three videos. So uh, I'm going to dive right into the personal questions that I received uh, doing our AMA. Jared Jones, I'd like to see a photo of what you looked like before you grew the beard and then uh, after. Well, after is right here. This is what I look like now. And then uh, this is me without a beard. A young Kiefer Sutherland is what I used to get. Frank Wave says, do girls touch your beard? Well, uh, not only do girls touch my beard, but also guys. Uh, that's one of the cool things, or maybe not so cool thing, is once you have an awesome beard, people are curious about it, and they want to feel what it feels like. So, uh, if I'm in good spirits and they ask nicely, then I'll want to, uh, then I'll, uh, let them touch the beard. But remember, uh, touching a man's beard without asking for permission is like a man touching a woman's boob, uh, without asking for permission. So generally, if they're a little feisty and they go up and and uh, grab the beard without asking then uh, especially if they're women i let them know that i now have to touch your boobs because it's equivalent keith gee what's my daily routine including beard care and work and etc and so uh depending on when my baby wakes up i'll roll out of bed probably about 6 30 or 7 o'clock throw on a robe and uh, make a bowl of cereal and go straight to my computer and start working and then i'll work until probably usually about like 8 or 10 o'clock and then that's when I hop into the shower and uh, take my daily shower, get out, uh, do my normal beard care routine, which means uh, when the beard's still wet. In fact, I got a video on, on a lot of the things that I do. But I uh, apply my beard oil. Uh, I've gotten to the point now where I pretty much have to blow dry the beard because I can't stand the way it looks when it's not blow drying. And then after the beard is done, I'll style the hair. Uh, and then I uh, get back to work and usually I'll head to a coffee shop after that, work out of a coffee shop. And then I finish up work at uh, whenever, Just come back here, watch some TV, try to sell my house, try to do personal things. Robert Denny, how do you like Spokane? Uh, would you recommend living here? I do currently live in Spokane. He's looking to move, make the move from Ireland to Spokane. So we probably get a little bit more snow here than in Ireland. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been really good to me. I've been here for five years. Uh, we are moving to Austin, Texas, actually, in a couple weeks. But uh, the people here are really friendly. It's a very small uh, town, so it's very accessible. Traffic is a non-issue. You're able to get around pretty much anywhere. Uh, the South Hill is beautiful. There's beautiful parks. Manitou uh, Park is something that's fantastic. Um, you're really accessible to the outdoors, so if you're into snowboarding or if you're into outdoor activities, hiking, biking, things like that, Spokane's a fantastic town for that. Great place to settle, great, great community, great people. Um, if you can tolerate the cold winters uh, and you like a little bit slower pace, a little bit more laid back, then Spokane, Spokane's a great place for you. Beavis Bonds asks, do the curtains match the carpet? You get me. Uh, I get you. Uh, these curtains are uh, probably like a khaki color. Um, you'll have to take my, uh, my word for it. And then the uh, the carpet's a similar color as well. So um, I would say they match. Pokey250, what's your opinion on Jack Passion in terms of what he does for beardsmen and the culture? So from my gathering, uh, Jack's kind of gone AWOL. Uh, I haven't seen much new stuff from him uh, since his days on Whisker Wars. Uh, I personally have never met him, so I can't speak on his behalf of what he's like in person. Um, I think he's got a really gnarly red beard, stands out. And, and uh, I also think he's uh, pretty in tune with his style. He's a fairly stylish guy. Um, I think there's some drama that goes around, and I'm, I try to avoid drama, so... Uh, but, you know, anyone who uh, brings awareness to facial hair, uh, I think, is a, a positive influence. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, Duck Dynasty, which we all get, or Zach Galifianakis, or ZZ Top, or Jack Passion. You know, they all do it in their own ways, 
And it's good to show that the umbrella is a big umbrella. R. Blaine 82 asks, how much of my day is consumed with beards or beards in general? Uh, in addition to that, do you see the lifestyle as a fad or a long-lasting opportunity? And then uh, will you sell beard oil for the rest of your life? Um, so pretty much my life is beards. You know, everything I do is about beards. Uh, I go to beard events and of course running beard brand is uh, all about uh, the bearded lifestyle. So uh, probably like, geez, 40, 40 plus hours a week are beard related. And uh, I love it, man. It's just great. You know, like I've always considered myself a beardsman and being able to grow the beard out and live this lifestyle have been awesome. But in addition to that, like not only are am I living this lifestyle, but I'm helping other people see it and understand what the lifestyle is about and help bring people um, to a finer thing. Is it a fad? I think there are some people out there who grow their, their beards, their facial hair to fit in with other people, to fit into the trend. But I also think there's a shift in our society where uh, society is being more tolerant to men with beards. And those men who have always considered themselves beardsmen, despite not having a beard, are finally able to grow their beards out. So uh, I think those people are going to stick around. And again, it, it may be longer, it may be shorter, it may be big, it may be little. Um, but I see this as a, a long-term thing. And it's something ingrained in our own DNA. That's why we have beards. And the fad is actually shaving. And what we're seeing is the end of the shaving fad. Gabriel Ricks. What inspired you to grow the beard? Uh, he decided to grow his beard to stop smoking, gain respect for his body, become more calm, and to honor his uh, grandmother. Uh, do you have any re reasons that we could relate to? Um, you know, I don't think, uh, for me, it was as big of a shift. It was more of, uh, again, I've always considered myself a beardsman, and it was a sign of independence, becoming my own man, uh, living the life that I wanted to live rather than living the life that someone else wanted me to live. So it was, it was a big, it was a big process of, you know, the mentality of haters going to hate and this is who I am. This is the person I want to be. And, uh, the beard is part of that. Maurice Irvin, uh, he asked if I'm a smoker, tobacco smoker, and do you have any tips about not lighting one's beard on fire? Uh, I don't smoke tobacco. Uh, I've got a pipe, but I don't have any pipe tobacco around. Um, so I can't help you about lighting the, uh, the, the beard on fire. I'd imagine if uh, you're smoking cigarettes, then uh, maybe don't burn it to the end. <laughs> you get like one of these, uh, those old little, uh, those uh, 20s cigarette extenders, and then uh, light the cigarette way out here, take it off, and then start smoking. Maybe that's one way you could do it. Drink of the Cloud has a good question. How many baby birds can you fit in your beard? Well, it depends if they're like a uh, baby uh, golden eagle or if it's like a baby hummingbird. Uh, so I don't know the answer. How about a hair tutorial? Uh, how to get a cut? Uh, what to use in it? Um, I've got a couple of those. Uh, I've got a hair cutting video here. I've got a hair products video here and then a hair styling video here. Watch all of them. Uh, half step 67. How close does a fly get to a ceiling before it flips upside down to land? Um, I would imagine like three millimeters. Isaac Markham asks, are there people who actually shouldn't grow their beards and what are your thoughts on manscaping? So uh, the only person who's in control of deciding whether or not they should grow a beard is themselves. So uh, whatever that individual feels like, they should do. I'm not one to judge uh, anyone else's beard. Uh, I'll encourage them and support them if they want to do it. Um, but I'm not going to uh, recommend or, or talk them down if, if they want to grow it. But uh, manscaping, you know, uh, I think uh, you got to look beautiful however you want to look beautiful. So whatever you feel is comfortable for doing that, then uh, you should do it. I think if it gets to the point where you're obsessive about it and, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like an OCD problem, then maybe you should look for alternatives that are a little more healthy, like, uh, I don't know, exercising. Ryan Naive. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Do you have any awesome jokes that you haven't been able to work into the video? Um, yes, I do. I do. Um, 
How can you tell if you're a pirate? You just are! Okay. Nader 1687. Why am I moving to Austin? Uh, I lived in Austin actually 10 years ago and been trying to get back there since. We finally had an opportunity uh, with my wife's job to be able to do that and really stoked about it. Austin's a great place. It's centrally located. Uh, weather is great. Uh, great community there. Super fly fat guy 859. What are your thoughts on firearms? Um, so I am not a, uh, a gun owner myself, but I am a big uh, proponent that, that citizens and individuals should be able to own guns uh, for their own purposes. Um, I could probably actually do a whole video on this uh, personal freedom series. Uh, personally, I think that if you separate your attachment to material goods, then the need for a gun and self-defense is, is a lot less. Um, but there are times when uh, people aren't going after material possessions, they're going after irreplaceable things like your family, in the case that uh, a gun is, is absolutely necessary to protect your family. And then in addition to that, uh, I do go out shooting target practice. I love shooting paper, love plinking. Um, I'm a fairly good shot. My dad's got a 1911, and uh, my, my uh, brother's got a few guns. That, um, skeet shooting, love skeet shooting. Skeet, 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 skeeting. Freshman's Alley. Uh, do you know anything about Lending Tree or something similar? They've got accounts that earn 10 to 15%. Um, I know Lending Tree as a way to get better rates on mortgages, but I don't know them as investment advice. Uh, traditionally, my investments are fairly, fairly old school. I do uh, a little bit of uh, gold, silver, stocks, uh, property, and uh, of course, my business is an investment for me. And then uh, I dabble a little bit in Bitcoin and uh, a few other speculative things, but that's a very small portion of my portfolio. Uh, I tried doing, uh, I think it was called Prosper, where you could lend to other individuals. I put like 100, 200 bucks into that and uh, didn't have good results. So uh, I'm a little bit of a laggard when it comes to investments. Bushido, what are your thoughts on female uh, pogo no files? Uh, what do you think beards play in the bedroom? And is there too much beard? Again, the beard is always down to your personal preference. Uh, beards play in the bedroom, you know, I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever you guys want to do behind your closed doors, you know, let the, let the imagination commence. And then, uh, female beard lovers. Yeah. I mean, anyone who loves a, a beard is a friend of mine. So, uh, yeah, we love you, uh, female beard lovers out there. Martin Locke, how do you sleep with your beard? I sleep, uh, horizontally typically on my back or on my side, and I deal with the beard hair uh, in the morning after uh, my shower. Christian Von Riestel, when did you pop the old cherry? Uh, that was a while ago. That was a while ago, I was in college. Michael Bass, what's your opinion with skinny guys, long hair and beards? Well, I'm a skinny guy with a pretty big beard, so that's a favor, and I'm actually uh, growing the hair out to go for the man bun. So obviously, I'm in favor of it. Carlos Santos, how's the beard developed over the years? So I couldn't really grow a beard out when I was younger. I was a late bloomer. Uh, I always started with uh, sideburns to about here that were, were pretty short. And then uh, I would have like a, a chin beard here. Again, pretty short. And then uh, as I got older, the cheeks filled in a little bit. They're still pretty, pretty thin. Um, and then the mustache. Um, I never really grew that out, but I think it always uh, grew in pretty well. So it wasn't until like my late 20s um, when I really started growing a full beard and growing out longer. Uh, so again, if you're a younger guy, you know, be patient. It does get better with age. Cody Young, <laughs> most embarrassing scenario with a beard. Uh, been denied a job because of the beard and this food gets stuck in the beard. So I own my own business. I don't have to worry about uh, applying for a job, which is fantastic. Uh, does food get stuck in the beard? Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot. And the, the probably the most annoying thing is taking a big bite out of the mustache. Um, but you get used to it. It's not that bad. And then uh, most embarrassing scenario. So 
I used to be really cheap and I'd park in the 10 hour meters, which was like a quarter an hour. So I was walking to it and they're in the less desirable part of town. Naturally, I was walking, I was wearing like actually some nice jeans and a H&M jacket, just a blue jacket. And I'm walking there and these like two women cross the street and they're like, Hey, you know, just want to let you know we're uh, headed to the shelter. There's some food there. We'd you'd love to have you. And I'm like, um, you know, uh, I was kind of caught off guard. She essentially thought I was a homeless dude. And like in the heat of the moment, like I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. Like uh, my, my truck's just right over there. And I think they were thinking that I was kind of like backing out of it and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, like I was ashamed of being homeless. And then, uh, like, I didn't know how to tell them that I'm not homeless, that I was a normal guy. So I'm like, it's okay, guys. Like, I'm not, I'm normal. And, like, I'm sure, like, that really reinforced their mind that I was kind of not all there. Um, but then I crossed the street and hopped in my truck and, and drove away. So maybe they did feel a little embarrassed afterwards. Alfred Loser, what kind of music do you enjoy most? I'm uh, big into the indie music. Uh, Alt J is a uh, radio I've been playing a lot. Uh, Arctic Monkeys, uh, The National, I love The National, uh, The XX. I really love uh, the kind of depressing slow beats, Radiohead, um, are some of the bands that I'm really into. Soulfab420 and Justin Evans, what's, uh, What's the meaning of life? What's the key to happiness? And is there life after death? Uh, meaning of life, man, uh, is being happy. And what is the key to happiness? I think it's being content with life. It's uh, not trying to achieve too much or uh, um, just really accepting what you have and, and being proud of what you have. It's a lot with being the beard. It's like accept what you have and you'll be content with life. You'll be happy with life. And is there life after death? Uh, personally, I am a, a non-believer. I'm an atheist. So I believe that this is the life you have. So you really have to make most of it and take advantage of your limited time. Sergeant Pepper 7715. Is there any facial hair that you particularly admire in the Game of Thrones? Uh, big fan of Game of the Thrones. Um, but there's really not a lot of awesome beards on there, is there? I mean, there's some, uh, like the Viper, he's kind of got like a, a pretty gnarly beard. And then uh, who is the dude who uh, was uh, married to Daenerys in the early seasons? He had a pretty rad braided beard. Uh, but no one's really been like, yeah, that's an awesome beard. So uh, hopefully they'll, they'll come out with uh, some gnarlier beards uh, in the future. And there's probably some character that I've forgotten. There's like a billion characters. Rainbow 2011 2011 says, How old are you? And am I a male or female? I am uh, 32 years young and I'm actually a female. Brian Laverdeer, uh, How long would you like your beard to get? Uh, how do you decide to, to cut your cheek line? And then uh, how are those neck hairs doing? And then... Uh, how long is it taking to get your stash? And do I ever trim the stash? So I never trim the mustache. Uh, this is as long as it gets and it grows. If I pull it straight down, it grows to the bottom of my chin. And then of course I, I comb it off to the side. Uh, I will trim the edges. Uh, so that it would be longer here, but I do trim them uh, on, the, on the tips. My natural cheek line is actually about here and there's probably about four or five hairs that grow out of this cheek line. So I keep it pretty natural. I just uh, need enough where uh, there's a couple extra ones. And then uh, this is about the length that I like to keep my beard. I've grown it uh, a little bit longer. I actually just cut off about two inches. And for me personally, it thins out and I'm not really crazy about that. Uh, this length's pretty good. I've actually been thinking about trimming the beard up pretty short, keeping the mustache pretty long. So I'll go in, in phases. I don't think I'm ever going to go full terminal. Um, and then my main occupation, I uh, own Beard Brand and uh, we're doing pretty well. We sell online products for beard care items. Check us out, beardbrand.com. And uh, we're up to four employees. And my next video will be all about Beard Brand, what we're doing in the future. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Cheers. Beard on.